Good morning. In the first letter of Paul to Corinth, in chapter 15 and verse 20, we see, But now is Christ risen from the dead. The whole system of Christianity rests upon the fact that Christ is risen from the dead. For if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Ye are yet in your sins. The divinity of Christ finds its surest proof in his resurrection, since he was declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. It would not be unreasonable to doubt his deity if he had not risen. Moreover, Christ's sovereignty depends upon his resurrection. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Again, our justification, that choice blessing of the covenant, is linked with Christ's triumphant victory over death and the grave. For he was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Nay more, our very regeneration is connected with his resurrection. For we are begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And most certainly, our ultimate resurrection rests here. For if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If Christ be not risen, then shall we not rise. But if he be risen, then they who are asleep in Christ have not perished, but in their flesh shall surely behold their God. Thus the silver thread of resurrection runs through all the believer's blessings from his regeneration onwards to his eternal glory and binds them together. How important then will this glorious fact be in his estimation, and how will he rejoice that beyond a doubt it is established that now is Christ risen from the dead, the promise is fulfilled, redemption's work is done, justice with mercies reconciled, for God has raised his Son.